Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Kevin. And in this week's video, we're gonna take a look at a protocol that lets us set up a phone call between a couple of Cisco IP phones. Here I've got a couple of Cisco 8865 IP phones. And if I go off hook on one phone and call the other phone, that call that's now in progress, that was made possible due to the protocol called SIP the session initiation protocol. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the back and forth messages going between a uh, Cisco IP phone and a communications manager, and the communications manager and the other Cisco IP phone will distinguish between SIP early offer and delayed offer. And as always, if you enjoy this video, if you find it valuable, please give me a like down below and be sure and subscribe so you don't miss any of our weekly content. Now let's take a look at this video from our SEAL core video training series on SIP. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how the Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP, is going to be used to set up a call between a couple of our SIP speaking endpoints, such as our SIP speaking IP phones. Those are the only types of phones we're going to be using in this course. We're not going to be looking at the Skinny or the SCCP speaking phones, just SIP. And first, let's understand that SIP has a couple of message types. And those are requests and responses. And these message types are not going to be sent directly between the IP phones themselves. Instead, a message is going to go between an IP phone and a SIP server. And primarily in our environment, the SIP server that we're going to be using is the Cisco Unified Communications Manager server. And a method or a message type that's going to be sent from, in our case, a Cisco IP phone to the Communications Manager and the response that that phone gets back from the communications manager, that's a response code. Let's take a look at some of the different methods we have out there, or these are different SIP message types. And I want you to visualize that when we're setting up a SIP call, we're really setting up a SIP session, and if we want somebody to join us in that session, we invite them. And that's the first method or message type I want you to know about. It's the invite message. This is inviting another party, such as another Cisco IP phone, into a SIP session, like a phone call. Another message is the ACK. This is going to acknowledge the final response that an endpoint receives to the invite that it sent. And we're gonna see this later in the video, but there's gonna be quite a bit of back and forth negotiation before the call is finally set up. But the final response the endpoint gets, that's when it sends the ACK. A cancel message could be used by an endpoint to tear down a call that has not yet been fully set up. The options message, that could be used to find out the capabilities of a SIP server or a SIP gateway. And as one other example, this is not a comprehensive listing, but as one other example is the buy message. This is going to terminate a call. And that might be because the server terminated the call. It might be because a user hung up on the call terminating it. Or maybe the call was rejected. Those are some reasons we might send the buy message. Now let's talk about the different response codes we have. And SIP response codes, they're much like the responses we get when we point a web browser to a web server. For example, have you ever gone to a website and your browser said 404 error? And that was because the page you were looking for was not found. That's an HTTP message. Well, that type of message is also a SIP message. In fact, there is a lot of overlap between SIP and HTTP messages. Now, they're not identical, but they do have some common response codes. And here's a quick reference on screen. If you take a look at this table, you see that we have six different categories of response codes. And if a call is set up and torn down normally, we're probably only going to be seeing response codes in the 100 or 200 range. 300 and above, those typically indicate some sort of an issue. The 100 series of messages indicates that the call setup is provisional. We're working on it, in other words. An example of that would be a response code of 180, which indicates that, yep, the phone's ringing. And when we're setting up the call successfully, we could send a 200 OK message. Maybe we get a 302 response code. That indicates that the destination we're trying to reach has temporarily moved. And temporarily means that after a certain period of time, we're going to try to go back to the original address. We've already discussed a 404 error message. That's something wrong on the client side, like they're trying to point to an unrecognizable address or something that does not exist. We could have an error within the server. An example of that would be a 500 error indicating an internal server error. Or maybe we have a global failure. That's the 600 series. For example, if we've tried our primary destination and we've tried to fail over to a backup path because the primary path is all busy, 
A 600 response code indicates we are busy everywhere. And now that we understand a bit about the different messages and response codes that are going to be used during a SIP call, let's take a look at a SIP call setup. That's the main purpose of this video. And there are two primary types of SIP calls that we might run into. Early offer and delayed offer. First, let's consider early offer. And let's say that phone one wants to call phone two. In other words, it wants to invite phone two into a SIP session. And it begins with an invite message. And here's the distinction between early offer and delayed offer. With early offer, SDP information is contained inside of the invite message. SDP, that stands for Session Description Protocol. That's a protocol used to negotiate the parameters for the call being set up. For example, Phone One's SDP information might contain Phone One's IP address, a list of codecs that it can support, maybe what RTP port numbers it's wanting to use for the call. And we say this is early offer because this SDP offer is very early on in the call setup. We don't get earlier than being in the very first message. So we're saying, here's an invite. I'm inviting you into the session, and here are the parameters that I'm proposing that we use for this call. And that's forwarded over via the communications manager to phone two. And here comes one of those provisional messages as we're trying to get the call set up. We respond with a trying message. That's a 100 message. And then the phone starts ringing. We send a ringing message. And now Phone2 can select perhaps a codec from the SDP offer. It knows what port numbers are going to be used for the RTP stream. And it's going to send back a 200 OK message. A 200 series, that's a success message. It's going to send a 200 OK, and that's going to include Phone2's SDP answer, saying, OK, let's use the G.729 codec. And yeah, we're going to use these ports that you wanted to use. And now we've done all the negotiation we need to get the call set up. And at this point, we have two-way media going not through the communications manager this time, but directly between the IP phones. This could be our RTP media, the real-time transport protocol that is maybe carrying voice. Maybe it's also carrying video. And once we've got our two-way media set up, remember we said that the last message that gets sent in response to an invite message is an ACK. Phone 1 is now going to acknowledge that we have invited Phone 2 into the conversation and this invitation is now complete. So we send back an ACK, an acknowledgement, which gets forwarded over to Phone 2 and now our early offer SIP call has been set up. Let's contrast this now with delayed offer. Remember, with early offer, the SDP, the session description protocol information, it's contained early on in the call setup. It's inside that invite message. That's not the case with delayed offer. With delayed offer, we still send an invite message. Phone 1 still wants to invite Phone 2 into a SIP session. However, there's no SDP information inside of that invite message. The call proceeds much like it did with early offer. We send back a trying response and a ringing response. But here's where the SDP information comes in. Remember with early offer, Phone 1, the initiator of the call, it was proposing SDP information. It's proposing, let's use this codec, let's use these ports. However, with delayed offer, this proposal is going to come from the recipient, from Phone 2. Phone 2 is going to be sending the SDP offer inside of the 200 OK message. And since that is the last message that's required to set up a call, we're now going to acknowledge that from Phone 1. And the acknowledgement itself, that's going to contain the SDP answer, letting Phone 2 know what Phone 1 has chosen from the menu of options that Phone 2 gave it. So that's the acknowledgement response. And now we have our two-way media set up. So that's the big distinction I want you to take from this video. SDP information, that's information about the phone call we're trying to set up, such as IP address information, port number information, codecs that we're going to use. And those are just a few examples. There are lots of other parameters we could negotiate as well. 